MMAfighting.com in Liverpool. It's been a dramatic morning ahead of the big UFC event here. Darren Till weighed in at 174.5 pounds and the other hometown hero, Molly McCann, missed weight by one pound at 127. Here to take a look at the event for the preview show with me is Nick Pete, former editor of Fighters Only and the host of the Fight Disciples podcast, a native Liverpoolian. How does this feel, Nick? You've been waiting a long time for this to happen and it's been a bit of a disaster, so to speak, this morning. Yeah, it's uh, it's been kind of crazy. You know, this this 48 hours, I've been looking forward to it so much. Obviously, Liverpool in the Champions League on a Saturday night and then the events on Sunday. And you know, I've been writing about fight sports in this city for almost two decades now. And, you know, it, we, we came so close, or what felt like so close, with the likes of Paul Sass and Terry, Terry Etim and Paul Kelly, and you thought UFC are going to come, and it never happened. And finally, we're here now, and it was like it was going to be this big, huge celebration weekend. And this morning, Pete, I feel like I've been punched from pillar to post myself. You know, I feel like I've been put through the grind, and I haven't even had to make weight or not make weight, as the case may be. So, thankfully, both fights are on now. Uh, the card's kind of been untouched, but I do I have got concerns about Darren Till and his, and his state of mind right now. Well, we've got to think about the, the kind of the factors that are going to go into this fight now. The 188 pounds by 1 p.m. tomorrow, 30% of the purse. You, you just spoke to Darren and Dana White over in the Echo. Can you, can you tell us what you found out with the incident? I know your Twitter's been yeah. a buzz for the last few minutes. Um, I know Darren offered to give Wonderboy 100% of his purse. Well. He said he completely takes responsibility for it. But he also shed light on the fact that his, his girlfriend, who's pregnant at the moment, who has got issues or had issues, hence the reason why I didn't go to New York for the press conference that was along, you know, related to the same health problem. Um, she was taken into hospital last night. Um, she's still in hospital now. Um, Dan says that, that kind of took him away or took his mind off his, his wake up. But you know what? He refused to make it, a, a, take a, you know, blame that and give full responsibility to that itch issue. He was adamant that he's a man, he'll take responsibility for not making weight. He apologised profusely and as I say, he even said to, to Wonderboy, uh, take all my money, take take 100% of the purse because right now I think Darren Till, especially as coach Colin Heron, they've just got to get his mind back on the job somehow. He looked very dejected today when he weighed in. It was almost apologetic and, and you can understand it given the situation but You've said now that you think his mindset needs to be kind of restored. We know how confident he has been, you know, all the way up to this event. It's it's a shame for this to happen at the final hurdle. Yeah. Uh, wh what have you kind of got the read of him over there in the echo? H how do you feel like his mind is at the moment? He was awfully quiet backstage, um, but then he was kind of excited and quiet backstage um, for the media workouts the day before. And then when he came out, he just exploded into life and he, and he loved every second of it. So when I was chatting with him backstage and you know, I was asking him how his, his, part, his girlfriend was and things and he was subdued then, I didn't really think too much about it. But then when I watched on the jumbo screens that he came out and he was still kind of subdued and you know, he was apologetic, of course, for missing weight. But even when he did the head-to-head -head with Stephen, you know, he, he just didn't feel as, as big and as strong as he usually is. He, looks, he likes to portray that whole gorilla look and he never really pushed his chest out too much. And I, You know, he's kind of looking at Stephen apologetically and he needs to change that. He needs to switch back on immediately because, you know, as we, as we all know, we've gone into this fight and we're all kind of going, this could be an absolute 50-50 strike and masterclass. But both of them have got to be absolutely 100% spot on. And, you know, speaking to Stephen Thompson this week, he's switched on. He's ready for it. Can Colin Heron get Darren Till switched back on in time for Sunday afternoon? Dana White is obviously kind of, it, it reminds me a lot of the UFC Dublin, I know many people have made this comparison of when they kind of created Conor as a star, they pushed him out there, he fought Brandao in front of his hometown, the whole place went, you know, ecstatic, and then the American audience were suddenly very interested, this felt very similar yeah. in respect that, well, Darren had a lot tougher opponent, let's be honest, but I mean, it felt like they were kind of, they were setting the deck there for him to go out and become a star here. How do you think Dana Hoy feels about this, you know, like, I mean, is he taking the fact that this is obviously a very serious family issue for, for Darren or do you think he's disappointed with the fact that he's kind of brought the UFC, particularly for him, and it's kind of blown up in his face to a certain extent? I still think it can be rescued, but just this morning. Yeah, I think just chatting to Dana then backstage, you know, he's still super excited for the event. He said, I've just pulled all the fighters backstage and I said to them all, right, raise your hands if you've never fought in the UK before. He said, most of them hadn't. And I just said to them, get ready. It's going to be amazing. This will be a moment you will never forget, whether you get booed or you get cheered get ready for something a little bit special so he's still pumped he's like listen I haven't come all this way because I think it's going to be uh, you know a damn square be easier because he knows it's going to be a party um, in regards to Darren Till 
you know, he, he obviously understands the situation probably even more than, more so than me. And he he was quite he was quite forceful on it, saying, you know. This is what happens in life, you know. Sometimes fighters come up against adversity, and you know we've all still got to do our jobs. And at the end of the day, Darren Till's got a job to do. And you know, he talked about the fact that the city's had great fighters before. You know, Terry Etten, Paul Kelly, Paul Sass, Scanlon. You know, all these guys, and none of them are big enough stars to bring the UFC octagon to this city. He's got a star now, big enough to bring it to this city. Now Darren Till has to shine like a star. The thing is, we all kind of thought, like, if he beats Wonderboy, he, he's right into that title picture now. Now, 174 pounds, I mean, is, is that a risk then for the UFC to put this guy in a title shot now? Like, I mean, do you think that's on their minds, you know, going forward with Darren? Even if he goes in tomorrow and he, and he you know, he, he gets a big win, yeah. creates this massive spectacle, do you think they still have to kind of give him another step? He needs to prove that 170 pounds before they can kind of push him into that title scene? I think absolutely now, you know, and, and prior to prior to the last 24 hours, I was adamant this month, this, this four week period, it was about which welterweight shine brightest for me was going to get the next shot at Tyron Woodley, regardless of the interim title fight. Tyron's been wanting a, a star, he wants someone to generate pay-per-view boys. I believe right? that the biggest, the biggest performance out of, out of all these fights, all these welterweight fights that we're getting at the moment, uh, would have got the next shot at Tyron Woodley. Kamari Wozman blew it last week in my opinion mm. with, a, with a performance which was pretty flat a points decision um, I truly thought, thought that Darren Till if, if he was able to light up Stephen Thompson um, tomorrow I think he would have jumped ahead of the queue or certainly have been in pole position prior to the interim fight taking place but for, now you can't do that now he's got to have another fight and now you know what he could end up if he, do, if he is successful tomorrow he could end up getting that Kamari Wozman fight you know because at the end of the day, he deserves to get his hand slapped a little bit now. You know, he, he's he's missed weight. He's he signed a contract to do the weight, and he didn't make it. And he, while he accepts responsibility, you can't go from that kind of position, especially missing it the way he has. You know, quite dramatically, you can't go from no matter how good he is tomorrow, you can't go into a title fight after that, in my opinion. He's a big welterweight. You know, uh, he often calls himself, "I'm a I'm a light heavyweight competing at welterweight." Now we have a situation where he, he can't really reload the way he'd want to, you know. It's, it's 188 pounds by 1 p.m. tomorrow. It's a very early event tomorrow. I think they're expecting the main event about 8 p.m., 8, 8, 9. How much does this affect him? Like, for him to be watching his weight, not being able to kind of enjoy his food, get a, get a proper reload. I mean, do you think that, that's an, an issue as well here? Absolutely. This is a guy that usually would go up to over 200 pounds comfortably. He'd have probably walked in at 205, there'd have been no issues. Yeah. So he's really got to hold back now. You know, he's basically got to stay on weight. Uh, for the next 12 hours or whatever it is, so it, it's obviously massively concerning. I, I mentioned that to Dana, I said, well, what happens if he doesn't do 188 tomorrow? And Dana said, well, that's up to Stephen Thompson. So I don't even think Dana, you know, usually Dana would say, he will make it, don't worry. Even Dana was kind of like, there's another conversation to be had tomorrow then. Because, listen, Darren Till will struggle to stay under 190 pounds. I agree. I, I do. He's a he's a huge guy. Absolutely. Like he, he's notably bigger than these guys when you see him. You know. This is why he's calling out the number one guy in the division. This is he's trying to fast track his way to the top because he knows his time at the welterweight division is short. But he, he, you know, in his mind, he's built himself up to be a three-weight UFC champion. He wants to achieve that dream. The only way he can achieve that dream is by getting a welterweight title fight within the next three fights. But the way, the way he looked on the scales today, listen, I, I know he's got a perfectly valid excuse. And as a father myself of two young children, I, I can only imagine where his Absolutely. mind is at, at right now. Let's, let's get that said first and foremost. This has been 10 years in the making. This city's been desperate for a star to bring the UFC here. And can I, I also understand what Dana's saying. You know, they, they've invested a lot of effort into bringing the UFC to a venue that they could have gone 30 miles up the road to Manchester and sold twice as many tickets, put twice as many bums on seats. But they've done this because of Darren Till. So Darren Till, uh, again, he, he, it's up to him now to get himself switched back on. Just final question on Till in this situation. A few people have, have thrown this around, including his rivals like Leon Edwards. He said that this event is a flop if Darren Till doesn't win because it's com been completely geared towards him. Even though Wonderboy is an absolutely fantastic opponent, he still thinks for this event to be a success, Darren Till needs to win. As a Liverpoolian, how do you feel about that? Do you, do you agree with that? Uh, I don't agree 100%. No, I, uh, you know, it's been a long time coming. The dream of the UFC coming to Liverpool existed long before Darren Till even laced up a pair of MMA gloves. So, 
Um, I don't agree with that at all. No, I, I think most of the fans in there tomorrow. It was like to, like today. I know, I know Stephen got booed a little bit coming in, but you know the open workouts of the day. He was he was cheered. He was signing autographs. I think the reception from for all the fighters on the streets has been phenomenal. Uh, I think the whole city is in, you know really engaged with the UFC this weekend. And bear in mind the Champions League finals tonight. So it's competing a lot with something else that's absolutely huge. I just hope that. All goes well in the football tonight. I think Molly and then obviously Darren could rubber stamp what would go down as one of the greatest weekends in this city's history. We got to talk about Molly. Uh, I re my heart went out to Molly. You know, she went back. She tried to make the weight again. It looked like she was going out of her way. It, it seemed to be that a scale in the back w was giving her 126, and then yeah. she came out to the official scale that was 127. She went back again, tried to cut more weight, came back, and it was 127 again. And you could see her heart breaking nearly uh, as the, the weight was read out. This is a girl, I believe, who can get straight into the title picture at Flyweight with a win here, convincing win. She performed the way she performed the last time when she won the Flyweight title at the Echo. I think she becomes a part of that conversation because Flyweight needs, it needs stars, and she really is a star, especially in Liverpool. How do you think, like, I mean, do you think um, that, that she's she's devastated by the fact that she didn't hit the weight this time? Yeah, she was in tears. You know, it's the first time in her entire career she hasn't made weight. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I'm not a huge fan of the morning weigh-ins that the UFC abide by. I'm just, I, you know, I, I don't think it helps the situation at all. This is the first time Molly's ever had to weigh in the morning. She's used to fighting on cage warriors. Right. And it's a, a normal afternoon weigh-in in front of the fans. So whether that played a part, you know, sometimes it, it's the smallest margins. And if she's used to getting up in the morning, cutting the last three, four pound, whatever it may be, but suddenly that morning now is taken away. Uh, you know, sometimes it can, it can take a little bit of getting used to, and, and I know she was devastated. She was in floods of tears, but uh, you know, I've just spoke to her backstage again then at the ceremonial way, and she seems to have picked up an awful lot now. She's happy now, you know, she's got her head kind of back on it, but she just felt like she'd, she'd let the UFC down a little bit. And, you often get that when someone's UFC debut. They don't want to upset anybody. They yeah. just want to have the perfect like kind of beginning with the company. And she feels like it was tarnished a little bit. But um, you know what? She's got one thing that the other 21 fighters who are competing at the Echo Arena tomorrow don't have. And that's experience of walking out on the Echo Arena. She's done it. She fought. It's pretty loud. It's pretty loud. Yeah, well, she, she's fought here. She headlined. She won the Cage Warriors world title here. She knows the dressing rooms. She knows where the bathrooms are. You know, she knows how it feels, how it smells, what it looks like. She's done it. And the, the other 21 fighters on this card haven't done that. So she's got an edge. So she should go into that fight tomorrow full of confidence. Put behind the fact that she missed weight by a pound. Um, uh, you know, and, and just get the party started. There are way more fights that we should probably talk about, but I, I mean, I think the situation has uh, <laughs> taken us away from that. Yeah. But I, I got to ask you about the match tonight: Real Madrid, Liverpool. Yeah. Champions League final. What way does this impact tomorrow's event? I mean, if it's if it's a loss, if it's a win, do you think it, it matters? Does it? Yeah. Th does it? I'll be in tears. <laughs> if, if, if Ronaldo pops up and Real Madrid win, I will be devastated. Ronaldo seems to be uh, the, the main guy. Is this because of the United background? Of course, is yeah, yeah. He's a thorn in my side. So, But we've got Mo Salah, so <laughs> anything could happen. Listen, uh, I, as, as crazy as it sounds, if Liverpool win the trophy tonight, and I'm, I'm sure they will. I'm, you know, I'm a Liverpool fan. I'm a Liverpool season ticket holder. I'm adamant we will win. I think that would just get the weekend off, you know, after this morning stuttering start and it felt so dejected earlier on when you were thinking, wow, is this main event even going to happen? You know, I, I heard a UFC member of staff walk past me and saying the words uh, Thompson versus Magny and I was my heart dropped and I was like, oh no, please don't do that. Glad you didn't tweet that. I know, exactly. <laughs> so, listen, we're here now, the fights are being made, it's all sorted, let's go and enjoy the football, let's watch Mo Salah lift that European Cup above his head, and then logistically we'll contend with it tomorrow, because that's going to be the crazy thing, because the, the tour with the bus actually goes right across the arena, and there's only one way into the arena, across that the strand, across one road, and the tour's actually going across oh, that no. road, so it, it's going to be a logistical nightmare, no big security Steve from the UFC, uh, if he had any hair left, would be turning his hair out, because he, he's got no way of getting the fighters to the venue, that so sounds like a mess. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> it's going to be bonkers. But you know what? I'll be delighted if it is bonkers because it means obviously we've won the kill. Finally, let's let's make some picks here. Just the main event. Let's take a look at after everything that's happened today. Yeah. How do you think this is going to go? Um. Today's really got me questioning. Oh, it's complete. It's completely question, ripped it right open. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was a close fight anyway. Um, I thought Darren Till would be too big, too strong, too keen in his home backyard. I think I was I was concerned Stephen Thompson 
may have done a little bit of a cowboy Cerrone and look past the fact that he's so young and he's so new to the game. And, you know, if you look at his back catalogue of UFC fights, you know, a couple of points decisions, the draw with Dalby, you know, and, and people don't look into the fact that he, he fractured his shoulder and, and he, he won the rest of the fight too. He hardly dropped the round. And I think, they, you know, a lot of fighters just look and think, well, you know, he's not too much. And I think Thompson may have done that. But I also think Thompson came to Liverpool pretty pissed because he's the number one guy and he's been overlooked for the interim title fight and they dragged him all the way to the UK and you know if he needed any more motivation the other guys just missed weight by three and a half pounds as well so I think Stephen Thompson's going to be absolutely locked and loaded tomorrow and Darren Till missing weight like that you know we were questioning whether he could do five rounds anyway I think right now if it goes past three rounds you've got to go with Stephen Thompson I think Darren Till's just got to try and bum rush in and, and get this fight finished as soon as possible I gotta agree with you I think the, the clever money is on Wonderboy at this stage but Interestingly, statistically, guys who do miss weight undefeated. Ten, yeah. Dana's you know, just said that. Yeah. Dana's just said the exact same thing backstage. Said we've had six people who missed weight. You went on to fight, and all six of them won. So, uh, you know, he's got kind of that to contest with as well. But listen, it, it'll be an amazing atmosphere tomorrow. I'm so excited by the fact that all the guys was mentioned earlier, Etam, Sass, Kelly, all those guys are going to be inside the arena. I felt like they've laid the foundations for for Darren Till. And the fairy tale, of course, is Darren Till riding off into the sunset with a with a win. But then, what do we do with him? Is he the number one ranked guy in the world, or is he a middleweight who's just beat a welterweight? It's going to be complicated, no matter what happens. Nick, thanks so much. That was absolutely brilliant. A pleasure, as always. Anytime. Thank you. Bye bye.